current processing procedure. Generally, generally 21 days for most transactions, so additional time might be required where potential public interest concerns necessitate further review. In addition, the second report and order extends the spectrum leasing policy to three additional wireless radio services. The multi-channel video distribution and data service, the automated maritime telecommunication system service, and public safety radio services. With regard to the latter service, public safety licensees now may lease spectrum to other public safety entities or to entities that provide communications in support of public safety operations. Further, the second report and order clarifies that spectrum leasing parties may enter into a variety of dynamic leases to share use of the same spectrum over the same general period of time. These dynamic arrangements are increasingly made possible by advanced technology. Finally, the second report and order establishes a new regulatory option termed the private common. This new option enables licensees and spectrum lessees to provide greater access to individual users and groups of users to spectrum. Where they do not destroy within the current option for spectrum leasing or within
But the Commission's ever-expanding secondary market policy to allow licensees to transfer a significant price to license and hold the spectrum on a day-to-day basis without applying to the Commission and without the right to uh, repeat it here. But because I believe that the Commission's overall scheme was just allowed by the Communications Act, I will defend on the program. I think it is, <coughs> it is important for us to take all steps to find to facilitate more efficient use of the And I think, uh, as I think Paul, you described in your presentation, technological changes are actually creating a greater opportunity for us to kind of find out the future. And so I think that it is very specifically what we've been doing in the past. Secondary markets have already been voted on before to see the balance between markets that encourages and nurtures new technologies and spectrum use on one hand, and on the other hand, uh, not to mention the ultimate control over spectrum. I support most of all order because it takes additional steps to further the development of secondary markets and maintaining the balance that we started last year to control the potential to good spectrum policy. The secondary markets do hold a great deal of promise for the whole country in particular for the rural areas. By moving burdensome regulatory obstacles, you can get the spectrum in the hands of people that are ready and willing to use it. I'm also pleased to see that the Commission has identified additional avenues for licensing and leasing to use spectrum. Non traditional approaches to spectrum facilitation, like private commons, open the door to more users, which in turn leads to new services. I am uh, compelled, I think, to dissent from a small portion of the item because I think it loses its balance in uh, adopting so-called immediate approval procedures for certain license transfers and assignments. I'm just not convinced that there's such a problem with a streamlined transfer and assignment rules that uh, would warrant a determination that would forbear from requiring prior notification for certain transfers and assignments. We've only had this current procedure in place, this 21-day waiting period for about uh, six months, and it seems we should see how it's working before we ban it entirely and say we're just going <coughs> to automatically approve these things. Um, but more importantly, when we do forbearance, we have a high obligation to really justify it. I don't think our analysis really does fulfill that here. It's one of the Commission's bedrock obligations to make sure that spectrum management is uh, properly done, and I'm not convinced it's 